I'm Ed Sperling. I'm the Editor-in-Chief of System Level Design. I'm here with Prakash Narain over at Real Intent. Prakash, when you think about all the things that are going on in verification, what's happening in the industry right now? What's, what's the high-level view, and then we'll drill down a little bit. There is so much activity going on in the industry, especially in the verification and sign-off space, that it's a really exciting time. Uh, I would like to focus uh, my, uh, this conversation on uh, uh, SOC sign-off. That's our uh, domain of expertise. And uh, amongst other things, uh, mm, there is a lot of innovation that is going on in that particular space as well. You know, there are all types of sign-off, though. We've got SOC sign-off, we've got RTL sign-off. What's the difference? How do you define them? Good question. Um, so, uh, first of all, let's understand what is sign-off. Um, sign-off is the process of ensuring that some particular failure mode that can happen in your design will never happen. That has been the traditional definition of sign-off. Timing sign-off ensures that uh, uh, timing-related failures do not happen. We use SOC, we talk about SOC sign-off because our, our real intent is focused on providing complete solutions to cover certain failure modes in the design. So for, let's take for example CBC. Now clock domain crossings uh, are designed into the, uh, your RTL and that is clearly the first place where you need to ensure that your design is functioning correctly. However, you don't accomplish sign-off there. You really need to also, after that, run some verification on your netlist also, and then only you accomplish the full sign-off. So the term tradition, uh, RTL sign-off actually is a misnomer in our uh, opinion uh, because it is uh, aimed towards imp the uh, productivity, uh, RTL productivity. The argument is that there is a set of rules that you should uh, um, follow and, and, uh, and uh, clean out to get a more productive synthesis and implementation flow. We understand the value of that, but for us, th that's more like, you know, I would like to say a, 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 an enhanced concept of linting or early verification. Sign-off, on the other hand, is a process that ensures that uh, a failure will not happen in your design, uh, and that typically requires, uh, and in many applications, requires verification not just at an RTL level, but at full chip netlist levels as well. So that's how we differentiate between SOC sign-off and RTL sign-off. In summary, one is an advanced concept of lint and the other is a true sign-off application. Sign-off typically has to be done at multiple stages throughout the life of a design though too, right? It's not just you're going to sign off at the end. Now we're starting to think of sign-off as different phases of the design. Mm, uh, actually, uh, if we mo uh, create a, uh, take a look at the how uh, mm, chips are designed, um, they are designed by running multiple multiple activities in parallel, okay? And uh, so for an application to actually add value in the flow, uh, you have to look at two dimensions. One is that it should be available for deployment at the right time in the design flow. And uh, it should have uh, the ability to be deployed at all stages of the design flow where uh, the sign off is required. So as again, Going back to the CDC sign-off process, clearly you need to use it at an RTL level. Okay, you need to accomplish full chip CDC sign-off, uh, but that doesn't because that's that's where uh, finding errors and fixing them is most efficient. But uh, that's not where the problem stops, uh, because in the implementation process, or even on a CDC clean RTL, you can introduce bugs, and uh, uh, because of the synthesis process. And, uh, and this is why uh, the, the, the capabilities are needed so that uh, CDC sign-off can be accomplished at the netlist level as well. So any time you can uh, efficiently uh, create a functionality which can be deployed at the right time in the methodology, that's a plus. But the functionality must be complete uh, in order to be called sign-off, which means that it should be deployable all, at all stages where it needs to be deployed to accomplish sign-off. Where are you seeing the real pain for engineers in this industry right now? I think at the highest level, the biggest contributor to pain is the increasing complexity. Okay, Designs are getting larger and larger. We just two years back, uh, we used to uh, deal with 100 million gates designs. And now gigascale designs are, are on their way to being the norm. Uh, when you couple that with the fact that the design cycle times are still relatively the same, that means uh, chips that may be 10 times larger need to be designed and pushed through 
in the same amount of time as before. And this requires very significant amount of tool as well as methodology advancement. Uh, it's no longer, uh, it's, it's not about being able to do, uh, uh, complete a certain task. It is about uh, being able to complete a task in the most optimal uh, manner, which is the, with the minimal amount of engineering and time investment. That is really the value proposition that needs to be brought into the methodologies continuously to keep pace with the, uh, with the increasing product requirements. One of the ways that people are dealing with complexity is to break things down into uh, subsystems. We're starting to get to platforms. And then also, we're dealing with a lot more IP and third-party IP than was in there in, in the past. How does that affect SideOff? Uh, one of the ways uh, to manage this com much complexity is to minimize the amount of change per design and uh, increase your dependence on IP and pre-verified components. So IP integration is a very integral part of um, uh, uh, the design process at the present time. Uh, what is interesting is that, however, is, is still the the true differenti the si differentiation happens, uh, you know, at the at the product level, which which requires that a lot of new elements are also added into the design. So while the IP requirements reduce the complexity, we still have to complete, you know, the full sign-off process. Now, we can we can make some assumptions which make the which makes the sign off process simpler uh, in the presence of IPs. Uh, however, uh, and so it reduces the complexity, but it does not eliminate it. Uh, the The final burden is actually on the SOC uh, company, the one that is putting the chip together. Okay, and uh, and and it is very important that they actually completely verify or completely sign off on whatever aspect that they're signing off. So the IP process, it reduces, the IP utilization process, while it reduces the complexity, it does not completely eliminate uh, the uh, complexity associated with creating very large designs. So are we at the point where we're keeping up with the complexity? Are we able to manage it all and manage it all in digestible chunks, or are we getting in over our heads and have to rethink how we're going to approach this? Maybe a, a two and a half D, three D uh, stack die or more platform type approaches? The model uh, that I think uh, in a continuously changing environment at a rapid pace, what we are looking at is a series of incremental methodology advancements uh, to continuously keep pace uh, with the requirements. Um, if you have to completely redesign your uh, your methodology and flow, I don't think it's viable because the fundamental requirement is to be able to uh, put out chips uh, in uh, to meet the market demands, and and so so the so so the there is a tremendous pressure on all pro tool providers to continuously enhance and improve the tools to keep meeting these requirements. There are continuous enhancements and advancements in the methodology space. Okay, the, the, there are brilliant chip designers out there who understand the process and who want to exercise control over their process and, and to make it predictable. And they are continuously making methodology enhancements at the same time. Uh, I simply look at uh, the progression of our products over the last three years and uh, the amount of work that we have had to do to keep pace with the, uh, with the deployment aspects of the tool to make the deployment efficient, to be able to provide the value, uh, maximal value per unit of investment that the user makes in it, has been tremendous. And uh, it has driven a lot of innovation, technical innovations within our tool, and uh, that is really the, 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 a very big driver. But to come back to your question, uh, you know, I see this as a process of continuous incremental advancements uh, in the design methodology and the user space, and hence continuous incremental enhancements uh, in the tool space as well. Prakash Narain, thank you very much for your time. Ed, thank you so much for taking time to uh, meet with me. I do want to, uh, again, just uh, leave the users with the two uh, thoughts. There's so much innovation going on in the sign-off and the verification space. I remember my conversation with uh, Andy Eliopoulos, who's the VP of uh, verification R&D at Cadence. Uh, we had an informal conversation at DAC, and uh, to paraphrase his words, this is a great time to be a customer. 
I'm really excited about what the future holds, and I believe the, the customers and the users out there have every reason to be very excited about what's, what the future holds.